at this presentation. Uh, I'm Charlie, and yeah, I'm going to walk you through this project that my team and I have been uh, uh, working on for the past months now. Uh, it's still very early, we still have loads of work to do. Zoom out a little bit and to talk about where we want to, be going, want to go and how we hope to be going there and why. Um, I'm very interested in any feedback that we, you could have about the project, the utility of the project, so uh, either at the end of the presentation or after the conference, please uh, don't stay to come and, and talk to me, with, with me about, about it. Uh, well, the project originally came from my first company, uh, that was a consumer app that was, uh, that still is actually uh, localizing uh, cultural content. And at some point in the history of the company, we wanted to, to implement 3D maps, okay? So we weren't really uh, just special developers, we were a small team, but we thought, yeah, how hard could it be? And <laughs> we had like this inspo board, you know, with uh, the experience of Pokemon Go, and you may recognize Zenly and uh, um, the recent uh, Apple Maps. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was what we were trying to, 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 to build, uh, like very immersive, very detailed, textured, not photorealistic maps. And uh, we naively saw that it should be as easy as implementing um, Google Maps SDK. And as you can guess, we, we didn't uh, end up doing that. We couldn't do it. And we tried a bunch of solutions, and we were quite bummed to not be able to produce this project. Um, I actually ended up leaving my first company last year uh, because of this subject. And then I met uh, Laurent Garafa, Drew Malik, and we founded a second company together specifically to tackle this issue. So yeah, Laurent is a researcher. Um, so this surface reconstruction is from the uh, French Institute of uh, Geographic Information and Drew is a uh, cryptographic and uh, uh, cloud engineer. Together we wanted to bridge the gap between on one side the huge amount of geospatial data, especially pan clouds that are collected by sensors every day uh, uh, on the world and on the other side, like developers like we were ourselves that are not very specialized, but they want, just want to consume data to produce pretty uh, uh, 3D maps. At the time, mainly for customer use case, but yeah, it, 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 it changed after that. Um, just before going, uh, diving in the project, I want to uh, uh, a quite quick overview of for development principle. It might not be very clear right now, but it should, be, it should make more sense as the presentation progress. So we're working with decentralized uh, uh, project. It's a decentralized protocol, actually. Uh, it would just mean that uh, the code, the data, the infrastructure, it's not going to be controlled by a single actor. That's very important to us. and. It resonates with the idea of public goods, of geo commons, or something that everybody can contribute to and, and uh, uh, consume and benefit from. Uh, the second principle, permissionless, is pretty much an echo of the first one. It just means that anyone that has the relevant resources can provide them to the project and anyone can consume the data. Uh, it's not always uh, uh, welcomed by uh, cities or public institutions that would like to keep control of the information, but that's something we're working on with them. Terminal to lake, like, well, it's not, I promise. Um, it just means that the protocol is going to be running for as long as uh, someone wants to provide data and someone wants to consume it, and no one, not one party can stop it unilaterally. Uh, it's working on blockchain, we'll see uh, what's that light later. So yeah, as long as someone in the world is running the blockchain, uh, it's not going to disappear. Constantly expanding, I feel like this principle is the one who better embody the project because by design, and that's, you'll, you'll see that basically presentation about the design of the protocol, and by design the protocol is meant to be uh, uh, expanding to, ma to make sure that people have interest to 
map new location, to add new levels of details, and uh, uh, to upload, uh, to update uh, the, the data themselves. Credibly neutral, credibly because uh, true neutral doesn't exist, but uh, it means that since it's meant to be unstoppable, we're trying not to add or bias about the situation today or, or needs today to um, the, the, the way we're building the, the protocol, right? We're building basically an infrastructure layer, so we're not affirming that a certain type of data or certain level of detail is useless because maybe in the future it won't be. Open, open source, yeah, uh, sure hope this one rings a bell. And um, non-extractive, uh, again, and the cure of decentralization, it means that we won't be uh, having a commission on the protocol, nobody will. Uh, we, we, yeah, we, we believe that if you want to get more value, more money from the protocol, you just have to uh, work more. Okay, so uh, next week, we're going to be uh, releasing our first little bit of, uh, uh, of of this project and something that we call the board of concepts, you know, like proof of concept, and uh, it's um, it's a Twitter bot, and it's a Twitter bot whose mission is to mesh uh, point cloud, like you can see here, as a lidar point cloud. Uh, lidar, if you haven't heard of it, is a remote sensing technology that produce point cloud of the shape of an object uh, with a light trace and here it's a lidar that uh, uh, it's a point cloud collection that's being uh, collected by um, again the French Institute of uh, Geographic Information they are running this huge program all over France and we're working with them on this on this uh, uh, proof of concept so yeah uh, we are uh, taking this information and uh, with a pretty simple bot, we're just uh, uh, being triggered by people who are asking uh, for a specific address or a specific landmark, and uh, we are uh, responding, uh, answering with uh, um, a meshed version or a point cloud version. On the background, what's happening is that uh, yeah, uh, we are, we're using uh, uh, well, we'll take the information, the request from the user. We'll uh, um, deducing which tile from the LIDAR HD collection contain the landmark that's requested, and then we process it with a SIGL algorithm, uh, open source reconstruction algorithm, uh, and then we publish it on IPFS, that's a distributed file uh, sharing and storing system. Uh, very good. And uh, then, yeah, we, we answer, uh, we give them, them pictures, information, or visualization to the user. Um, what's actually interesting is that we're doing that with this with um, uh, decentralized uh, computing. Uh, you can see, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but we're using Backlow. Uh, it's very early, uh, uh, very very interesting project for decentralized computing. It's built by uh, the same team that have built IPFS and Filecoin, so we're pretty bullish uh, on this project. Um, and yeah, uh, it's it's a big part of the of what we're trying to do. So yeah, that's first part of the project. A bot, that's nice, but it's limited by the fact that we're only using the point cloud from uh, uh, LIDAR HD, from IGN. Uh, the next step for us was to find this way to attract information from a, a, a very important tranche of uh, partners. And that's what we're going to be doing with the second part, that's the protocol. So this, the protocol that's called Circum uh, is meant to gather geospatial data from a lot of persons and it has a value repartition mechanism that basically we say it ensures that the people that contribute have their interests respected in the usage of the end product. So they contribute data, we use algorithm to merge a, a single map, at, at, uh, yeah, the best map we can do at point uh, at time t, and uh, they have usage rights for this. They can sell this usage rights. For, so basically when we say respecting their interest, it means either money or, or usage. 
Um, we're using blockchain, as I said, uh, especially uh, tokens uh, to represent the value that's circulating between the, the partners. Uh, I won't talk long about blockchain, that's just the, the technology that's uh, useful for us, and it allows two things that uh, is um, decentralization and uh, a trustless way of interacting with other people. And you'll see uh, that decentralization and trust are a big issue for this project. Um, so, okay, how it how uh, uh, works. Uh, let's say that Paris municipality have some data sets, some line data set, and they're going to provide it to the protocol. Immediately, the protocol will award token in proportion of the works that have been done by the partner. And if another actual, let's say their dear friend from the regional council, want to consume uh, Paris data or someone else data, they will need token, okay? So they can buy it, they can exchange it for something else, or they can provide data themselves, you know, because they're going to get token uh, as a reward. An important point is that this token are fungibles. Yeah, you may have heard of the evil twin of fungible tokens and non-fungible tokens, but yeah, th these tokens uh, uh, are equal to any other token. So if I produce data from here in prison, uh, the token that I will hand will allow me to access data anywhere in the world. Because yeah, I forgot to say it, but uh, the single utility of this token is that it allows its owner to consume a certain amount of requests, of map loads from the, from the protocol. Uh, so yeah, now that all the tech consumer, uh, regional council have the token, uh, they can access the data, consume it, and the token get destroyed in the process. It's an important pass, part because it balances the market. No. Um, the more value is provided and the more value is on the protocol, the more token is circulating. Obviously, uh, someone who uh, produces data can also be a data consumer. In this case, IGN would uh, produce data, get token, and then consume the data that after it has been augmented by other providers or partners. And uh, I said in the first part that we're using decentralized uh, uh, computing. Actually, the protocol we're going to need a lot of uh, resources, uh, algorithms, storage, human arbitration, uh, uh, data and computing power, and all of these resources are going to be provided by decentralized actors. And the actors are going to be rewarded by tokens like we just saw. Okay, so now, that's a very quick overview of a very complex project. Um, we still have a bunch of technical and design issue, uh, but the one that is going to be interesting for me right now is what happens if one of the partners start feeding bad data, maybe just a little uh, outdated or just straight out wrong data, just in order to get token. What happens if the trust between the partners and the protocol is broken. Well, that's where we're going to be going for the third part. And that's actually a pretty big subject when we first started designing the, the protocol. Um, because we quickly realized that for our decentralized protocol, we don't have a single source of authority, which means that when we get a data set, it's pretty much impossible to know for sure that it's correct, yeah. Uh, and because of that, we end up deciding that we're going to uh, um, design a system that relies on participant interest, uh, especially uh, economic interest. And we're using two uh, mechanisms that are the proof of stake and the reputation score. Let's see how it works. Before being able to contribute anything on the protocol, a uh, data provider will have to stake data, which means that they will have to buy tokens and then to lock them on a specific contract in the platform uh, to ensure the protocol against unfaithfulness. Okay? So here, he start contributing, there is stake out there, and then after some time, the protocol is going to be 
uh, uh, scoring badly the data that is provided by the data provider. Uh, because that's what we are able to do. We can't know when someone gives us data. We can know at face value if it's right or wrong. But after some time, we can say, ah, oh, that's weird. Uh, uh, other people that are providing data at the same place, they aren't agreeing with you. Or, oh, this is weird. We're able to uh, see patterns in the way you uh, contribute or patterns in the type of data that you're uh, uh, providing. And these patterns make, me, make us think that it's not very good data. Um, so yeah, we're scoring badly the data that you produce and it's lowered your reputation score. And when your reputation score gets below a certain threshold, your stake gets destroyed. We call it slashed. It means that the value that we have, you have locked on the platform is lost for you. That's one part of this consensus that we're building to implement trust between people that are and will start being on the protocol anonymous. Um, and another part is that we're going to be going from a one-shot reward, which means that I gave data, you gave a token, just a, a token or a single uh, a delivery of token, to a cyclic reward. Uh, the world protocol is going to be on a cyclic uh, uh, model, so um, let's say every 12 hours we're going to be recomputing the whole thing and we're going to be um, uh, finding which actuals, which data sets, it's actually the best one. It's the, uh, the best, uh, the most updated. And if you're part of this state of the map, you're going to get token every 12, uh, 12 hours and probably that other people will slowly become better than you at the point where you've provided data. So your reward will slowly decrease, decrease, decrease. It incentives you to uh, um, get, to, to keep up to date the data, to build a, a, a way to contribute data that are always the best one at this location. So yeah, uh, that's, Pretty ambitious protocol. Uh, it was a very quick overview, but if we end up being able to do that, uh, if we overcome the, the subject, we have a lot of expectation for this protocol. One of the information is that uh, the system is meant to produce by design uh, a, a protocol that's meant to approach real time. Um, it's also able to lower the price of the data because we're bringing to the market data that weren't available before. Data that would be byproducts, uh, data uh, that would be collected by people that just didn't have a financial model before. Because you know, today, uh, the financial model, Western financial model for uh, this kind of collection, uh, collection program is just, you have a big company or uh, um, a public institution that will put a lot of money on the table to be able to do this kind of collection. But with the system, with the blockchain, with the token, we're actually incentivizing people uh, to collect just small amounts, knowing that they will be able to sell it and to get money from the token. So yeah, this new business model, this new system should be able to uh, uh, lower the price of the data durably, to spread access and to expand maps outside of Western cities. Um, I've, I haven't mentioned it, but yeah, uh, we're going to be abstracting a lot of the complexity. Users and even providers, they won't ever be in contact with the blockchain. They won't see it, they won't uh, uh, have to manage the tokens or stuff like that. That's really, uh, we're really going for an experience like implementing the Google uh, Maps SDK, but for street map. Yeah, and I think I'm done. Perfect. I'm good with the time. Absolutely. Amazing. <laughs>